Welcome back. Getting back to the roots of what this channel is all about, showcasing alternatives in the free and open source world, today we are looking at my top five productivity app picks for the current month. Now, obviously there are plenty of great productivity apps out there. This is just five selections of uh, apps that I've found particularly helpful, useful, and I hope you do too. So let me know down below for suggestions for the next episode on in this, I guess, continuing ongoing series. I always like throwing apps together in a list, especially when they're just small one function apps. And if, uh, if we can all help each other out, that'd be great. All right, let's get on with the spuds. Looking forward to today's video and seeing what you guys think. But first of all, we're gonna start out with a clipboard manager. Now I know what you're thinking, clipboard managers are so ho-hum and everybody's got an opinion. CopyQ though, I think is a pretty good option. Here's why. First of all, CopyQ can do all the stuff that an advanced clipboard manager should be able to do, such as collect everything that you do on your clipboard. Uh, so every time you copy paste something, it'll hold it in a little bin for you so that you can come back to it later. But the other nice thing that it does is it gives you a way to organize those uh, clipboard clippings into different tabs. It gives you the ability to tag them. It gives you the ability to hold images in placeholders as well as text. And it gives you the ability to come in and make lightweight edits to those things when you want to store them for later. So that means that you're not spending any time stuffing around trying to find where it was that you copy pasted that thing from, but you can permanently keep these things uh, for ready access. Now I can imagine this being a huge useful tool when it comes to any kind of research that you're doing and you wanna keep track of where you've been with what kind of links and images and stuff to go along. Very useful when I'm researching videos and I need to also find screenshots or logos and that kind of thing, keep them all in the bin just temporarily so that I can import them into a video editor or whatever. And hopefully you can find a use case for this as well. CopyQ seems to be relatively desktop agnostic uh, and it should work fantastically across uh, pretty much any major Linux distribution. You can find it in FlatHub as you can with pretty much all these apps today. So you should be able to get some pretty good stuff done with an advanced clipboard manager like CopyQ. Second up on the list is Blanket. Blanket is a fantastic little app that I found last year and it's kind of like one of those white noise generator apps. Now, uh, for those of you who are curious, it is a GNOME app, so it's more better suited to the GNOME desktop, but what Blanket gives you is a selection of uh, dynamically adjusted uh, white noise sounds so that if you know it helps you to focus when you want to get into the mood to do some productive stuff you can adjust dial in all these knobs to get a really nice uh, a really nice audio to work by and as you can see you can play pause it so if I play it up here at the top you can see I can dynamically adjust how much of each of these um, different sound elements I have in playing in the background uh, so very simple app but very helpful to get into the mood to get some work done if this kind of thing floats your boat. You can also add your own uh, custom sounds if you have a particular loop of a lo-fi beat or something like that that you really enjoy. You can add that in here and add a volume knob to that as well. So that's Blanket. Once again, it's available from FlatHub. You can go and get that on any major distro. Uh, Barrier is the third pick of the day. And Barrier is one of those tools that is based on uh, KVM keyboard and mouse sharing technology. It's based on a fork of Synergy. Now back in the day, Synergy was a tool that you could uh, pay for and use on your computers to basically share the one mouse and keyboard across multiple PCs. So that means if you have, let's say a main desktop, which you have your favorite mouse and keyboard, but you also have two laptops off to the side or a desktop and, and a, I don't know, a lightweight device that you keep off to the side, but you wanna be able to use the same keyboard and mouse across all of them, setting up barrier on each of the client PCs as well as the host allows you to do that. Uh, now, Barrier is designed to do that and only that, so it sort of returns to Synergy's simple code base after they forked it, and they have been focused on trying to deliver on that promise ever since. Now, depending on who you are and how you set this up, it is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, which is very helpful. However, you will want to make uh, take the time to make sure that your uh, network infrastructure is set up the right way, because I have heard there can be a few gremlins when it comes to setting this thing up. It can be a little bit finicky, but when it does work, it's pure magic. And a lot of people discovered this app last year during, uh, during the COVID lockdown, and they had to manage multiple computers like their home and their work PC at the same time, and this saved them a lot of hassle. So Barrier, go grab it from FlatHub or grab it from GitHub and you can find installers for Mac OS and Windows as well. Fourth up, we have Rnote. Now on Linux, it 
is difficult to find um, applications that serve touch and pen based inputs. So RNote is basically a very simple uh, note taking application that is written in Rust and GTK4. So it's very up to date with uh, modern programming and uh, toolkits. And the idea is that you can use uh, vector based handwritten notes and be able to uh, create shapes and drawings and all that kind of thing. Very similar to what um, apps like GoodNote and uh, such on the iPad started out as. And, uh, and for the Linux world, I think it's important that we have a uh, that we have a handwriting option. Now, obviously, I am not on a handwritten device at the moment. So as you can see, my crude uh, attempts at some writing and uh, shapes and stuff have looked pretty crude. But you can stack up lots of different uh, drawings on an infinite canvas over time and, uh, and be able to uh, use shapes and filing and all that kind of thing to keep track of notes in a handwritten environment. The animations in the application are really smooth. Uh, owing to the fact that it's GTK4 based and you can obviously export a lot of these into vector based formats as well. Really nice modern take on handwritten note taking. Fifth on the list is a fantastic little app called Frog. Frog is a very simple extract text from anywhere type of app. Now, what I find with this kind of app is that it's very useful when you're trying to get app, uh, when you're trying to extract and copy paste text from a screenshot, especially something that's not automatically copy pasteable. So for example, if you've got like a tutorial video open and you wanna be able to extract or copy paste some text, take a screenshot, share it with Frogger, you can see that it's taken and extracted the text from that screenshot and plopped it into a copy pasteable text box. Now, obviously it's also grabbed some of the other text from higher up and it's had a bit of trouble interpreting some of the symbols, but for straight up text extraction, pretty helpful stuff. And finally, my bonus pick for today, coming in at number six, this is kind of the unofficial pick and a little treat for those of you who stayed around. If you haven't heard of Fondo by now, then you're dipping out. It's basically a fantastic app designed in and written in Vala for the elementary desktop, but it still looks great elsewhere uh, as a bit of a front end for Unsplash. So if you wanna find some really high quality wallpapers and that's the kind of thing that gets you in the mood to get stuff done, then Fondo is a great way to not only browse through some of these things, but search for them, collect them, and then uh, enable them as wallpapers on your desktop. So highly recommended that you check out Fondo as well. You can find that like everything else on FlatHub. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this is helpful. Again, let me know your suggestions for what I should do for part two in top five productive apps. And we'll see if we can keep this series rolling on, maybe month on, month off, something like that. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.